Good evening and welcome to the Lighthouse Church. We're so glad to see all these beautiful faces tonight. Welcome, welcome. It is variety night, so uh, you need to be thinking about that testimony or that scripture or just whatever you want to share with the body to edify it, build it up, and give praise to the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. If you're watching on live stream and you have a prayer request, you can send those in during praise and worship, and we will pray with you. Who I am and who I'm ever going to be. Jesus, you've already.
show you can you
still amazing how you saved me. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our team wins. Amen. Every time. (laughs) Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody here tonight. This is Variety Night. This is the night that you get the opportunity to share your heart, your song, your testimony, your word. Whatever's on your heart to share. Or you might just need to go pray for somebody. You know, we take liberty in this place, in this house. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. That's right. We don't need any bound up religion. Amen. 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 World's got enough religion. So we don't want that. 
Also, we've got a hot pink basket for tithes, offerings, missionary offerings. Right there. You can come down and worship the Lord in that. And I want us to... Uh, I want us to greet one another tonight. There are precious miracles seated right beside you. There are precious people seated right beside you. Every one of these people here tonight are purchased with the blood of Jesus. Purchased with the blood of Jesus. Boy, let us not think little of that. But let us honor and realize what he's done for every person and know that he is, look, he is working in every person's life in one degree or another, at one level or another, in his timing. That's wonderful. And all we need to do is step into what he's already doing. Jesus spent three and a half years doing that, stepping into what his father was already doing. He said, I just do what the father says and what I see my father doing, that's what I do. God was doing the work already and Jesus knew it. Jesus didn't have to work something up. He just entered into what the Father was doing. And I tell you, we get that mentality and we can step into some miracles and some life of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, do we want to meet and greet right this time? Grayson, you got a testimony? Okay, well, we'll testify. Come on. Get right in that mic and testify. There you go. When, when it was almost 6 p.m., when I woke up, I didn't feel good. My ear was hurting. I was, it was hurting bad a little, mm. real good bad, and then it still hurts. So I wanted to praise God that he would heal it and every day and every mo every day and every morning he would take care of us. So you're believing he's taking care of you, don't you? Okay. We're gonna pray for your ear right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord that you take care of us. We can always depend on you to take care of us. So, Lord, we agree right now that the pain and the discomfort in this ear go away because you take care of us. In Jesus' name, we rebuke this condition and the source of it, and we speak peace and healing, every good thing, the presence of Jesus upon this boy in a fresh way. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Does Jesus take care of you? Yes. Okay. Yes, he does. Amen. Everybody stand and meet and greet. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, I sure, I'm sure glad you're here. I'm sure glad you're here. Ooh, yes.
Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, who wants to be first tonight? Got a testimony, song? Just be bold. Come on, Brother John. <laughs> just want to say I love Jesus he loves me and uh, I've been going uh, Wednesday night uh, I come, come to church Brother Courtney was here and uh, I already had on my heart what I wanted him to pray for me sat back there all night and I just felt like I had my cap on my head I know it was a spirit on my head, and that's what I asked him to pray for with boldness. Well, here I am. So, you know. But uh, I go to different churches. I go with my girlfriend some, and my cousin preaches at the old skating rink down there. I just went Monday night, and uh, his his message was on uh, it was on uh, worry. You know, why, why you worry when you got God, you know, and, and that's the truth. But you have to have faith, yes. you know. And I told him, I said, you need to follow up with a message on faith. And uh, that was on me. I, Becky, my girlfriend, she has problems with this faith. She said, I wish I had the faith you got. I said, you can. I said, you just got to believe. Yes. And uh, I've been reading uh, the book of Hebrews this week. And, or this month, I've been reading, I read a chapter every morning, and I read chapter 11 this morning, and that's what it's on, faith. And I talked to her on the phone. I said, when you get off the phone, get you another cup of coffee. I said, get your Bible and read Hebrews 11. And I said, and that's going to help you out. And, and on live stream, if anybody don't know Jesus, I swear you need to get him in your heart. I said, life, life is better with him, and, and, you, and you can't live without him. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, before I share this, I just want to say, Brother John, I appreciate you. I really do. John went with me to the prison the other day. He stood up there and gave his testimony to those 20, what, 29 prisoners there that day. He was already bold, but I'm seeing the boldness getting bigger. Yeah. You know what? We get what we ask for. If we don't ask, we don't get it. But if we'll ask, we'll get it. And if there's anything we need today, it's boldness. The devil's real bold. So it's time for God's people rise up in boldness. We'll just pray for that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that you have given all things that we need in Christ Jesus. There's wells of salvation in him. So, Lord, we're asking right now that you give Holy Ghost boldness on every person on live stream, on every person here, boldness and wisdom and the Spirit of Christ rising up in every person to give the witness of Jesus Christ to this world. We receive boldness tonight. Say this after me. I receive boldness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I was coming home from work today, and uh, it came into my heart, to my mind, just to stop by the um, mechanic shop and check on my van. It's been in the shop. And uh, I stopped in, and actually they were test driving it. They had it worked on. They were test driving it, and it was gone when I drove up. And, uh, but also Bob was there working at that particular place. And so we fellowshiped a little bit, and I was admiring his work that he's doing for that building. But uh, we, we talked around there and everything, and uh, I needed to get my van home and all that. Well, there was a gentleman there 
who uh, needed to ride out to another location. And rather than the, the guys in the mechanic shop taking their time, since I was going that way anyway, I said, here, I'll give you a ride. And, of course, uh, somebody also, as I left, called me preacher and uh, told that gentleman that they were riding with the preacher. Well, that sort of opened the door. But here's what happened is I got in the car with him to take him to this other location. And uh, he was obviously of another nationality than me. And I said, where are you from? He said, Eastern Europe, Albania. Oh, really? I said, well, I've been to Russia. He said, well, what'd you go to Russia for? Well, that was my open door right there. I mean, you know, I went to Russia to preach the gospel, and he asked me what I went there for. So I said, well, I like to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus everywhere I go. And we took Jesus to Russia. And, oh, really? And we engaged in conversation, and uh, I was using some, I started preaching the gospel to him, how Jesus died for our sins, and he makes us righteous. And, and then he said, well, what is righteousness? And let me just say right here, a lot of times we are so familiar with our own language that people who had not have a clue what we're talking about, and we got to break it down so they can understand it. And uh, I said right then, I prayed. I said, Holy Ghost, help me here. Because, you know, I'm in the Bible. I know Bible terminology, and they don't. So here's what came to me just instantly. I said, uh, do you have children? Yes. And I said, uh, you're a small child. They're not able to drive, and you don't allow them to drive. They're not able to drive. He said, that's right. I said, you do the driving for them, don't you? Yeah. I said, that's the way Jesus is. He did the work. We in ourself can't be good enough to make it with God. We can't go to heaven. Our goodness will never get us to heaven. But Jesus... He took the wheel. He did the work. He made, the, he made it right. And all we do is we get with him. And it's his work that gets us to heaven. And his face just lit up. He comprehended that. That it's, you get in the vehicle with the driver. And it's the driver who makes it. You're just with the driver. Jesus is the one that makes it. It's not our righteousness and when people grasp the simplicity of the gospel, he also said, this gentleman also said, uh, I told him about the afterlife, uh, eternal life. And he said, well, some people don't believe in the afterlife. I think he meant himself. And uh, I said, well, that's okay. That's good. But uh, Jesus, he, he not only believed in the afterlife, he went into that afterlife and was raised from the dead and he's alive today. And so if he believes in the afterlife, I'm going to I'll follow Jesus. I believe in the afterlife too. And that seemed to say, well, if you're going to follow Jesus and he believes in the afterlife, then you're going to believe in the afterlife. So just in a few, just in a few minutes, I was able to share the gospel, the simplicity of the gospel, and with the Spirit's help in, a, in terminology that he could relate to. And I just thank God for that, you know. We, if we step out there and trust the Holy Ghost, He will give us boldness and He'll put words in our mouth that we've never thought of because He's out to seek and to save the lost. Amen? Amen. And He's just looking for some vessels to do it through. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Yes. Glory to God. Okay, now, who's going to be next? Okay. Come on down. No, I'm not going to preach. I just wanted to say that it's, it's awesome to be around God's people. It's a blessing. Uh, Jody and I went with Pastor to Sister Mary's church yesterday. Afterwards, we went and ate, and it was just fellowship. There is nothing like being with God's people and talking about what he's done. It was just a really, really good blessing for me. Um, I also want to thank God for, see my arm, <laughs> my cat tripped me, and so I fell, and uh, I just, I got bruised up, but it hurt my rib, and I want prayer for it, it's, I thought it was getting better, but it's not, and it's the rib that I broke here a few years ago, and uh, I just, uh, I just want prayer for that, but anyway, I also uh, reminded myself uh, when I was sitting there, 
and Pastor Jackie was talking about miracles. And uh, back when COVID first hit, I think it was 2020, like in March. And in December, I got COVID. And it was the bad stuff. And it attacked my lungs. And it was okay to begin with because I had a nebulizer and I was taking those breathing treatments. And then I couldn't. I couldn't get out of bed. And I could not breathe. And I had my phone and I te text pastor. And I said, I can't breathe. Pray for me. I'm not going to make it. I knew that I knew that I knew that if God didn't come on the if he didn't come in my room and heal me, I knew that I would die. It was that bad. And, you know, I, and the strange thing was I was okay with it. I, you know, I figured, okay, if I die, it's a win-win situation. So, but anyway, I, I texted Pastor and her and Jackie prayed. And I got better, and here I am today. But that was a miracle in itself. Unless you have been to that place where you cannot breathe, and you know that you, you're just not going to take that next breath. But if you've been in that place, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I just want to praise God and thank him for everything that he's done for me, my whole life, my whole walk with him. I just appreciate him and love him so much. We're going to pray for Marie's uh, uh, rib where she uh, fell. I want you to read Colossians 1.17. You need your glasses? Okay. Can you read Colossians 1.17? I think so. Mm. And he is above all things, and by him all things consist. Read that second part. And he is the head of the... Oh, and he, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Okay, by him all things consist. That word consist in the Greek says, means to set together. Oh, okay. To set together. By him all things consist. If we got fractured or broken bones or we need to get some things together in our body, that's a good scripture to stand on right there. That's Colossians 1.17. If you got a broken bone... By him, all things are set together, are held together, set together. By him, all things consist is the word used in the Bible. And so we're going to stand on that word right now, and we're going to agree that where she fell, where she has her hand, that that word is coming to pass in that. It's going to be set together, fully healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from our destructions, accidents, and other things. Lord, any attack of the enemy, right now in the name of Jesus, we bind it off. We push it back in Jesus' name. It's got to go. By him, all things are held and set together. By him, all things consist. By Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, we speak healing to this body in every way. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We serve a risen, living Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.17. By him all things consist. And the Greek means, uh, literally means, uh, are set together. Amen. You know, John was talking about faith in 1978. I developed a rheumatoid arthritis that was uh, not a cure for. And uh, I'm supposed to be in a wheelchair today. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't have faith. But my mother did. And I know, Miss Jenny, I know that Jesus can heal anybody. And he healed me. <clears throat> Amazing grace 
How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. was blind, but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, the Lord has promised good to me. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Lord, you are forever mine. You are forever.
Come prepared, right? That's not true. Oh, you're fine. That's fine. That's okay. So, how many have heard somebody say this before? My patience is wearing thin. Anybody ever heard that? How about, I'm about out of patience. How about, he's trying my patience. Have you ever heard of the patience of Job? She's got the patience of Job. He's got the patience of a saint. Those are all cliches that we say, right, about patience. So I, I kind of pondered on it a little bit and I looked up the definition of it. And the patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And I'm going to tell you, I'm speaking to myself tonight. Patience is something that I have to work on on a regular basis, right? And maybe you do too, so maybe this will encourage you. So the word patience, actually spelt that way, not any other version, occurs 34 times in the New Testament only, which I found that surprising that it was not actually in the Old Testament, the word patience. Um. If we look at Luke 21, 19, it says, In your patience possess ye your souls. How many has heard that scripture before? Yes. yes. And if we look at Romans 15, 1 through 4, it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us, who's he talking to when he says let every one of us? He's not talking to the world, is he? He's talking to us Christians. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. 
For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So it's important, I mean, to me, it really brought out the fact that God put those things together. The scriptures, that comfort of the scripture, which we all take comfort in when we're in the battle, when we're going through things, right? It comforts us. Scriptures comfort us and give us strength to go through those battles. But in this scripture in particular, he ties patience with that as part of so it's the patience and it's the scriptures that we find our hope in. And so one of the things I wanted to point out, you know, we, there are a lot of people in the Bible that you can look at and use as an example. But Jesus was the, the main one that showed patience over and over and over again. There were times when he was being pressed upon by multitudes of people but he continued to show patience and he continued to do that work of always helping out his neighbor, being there for the neighbor, not himself. And even when people were coming at him for miracles, they wanted miracles of healing and, and deliverance and different things. He maintained that level of patience to help them. And, you know, in the Greek, the word patience, um, says that it's, where's my note on that? It's being cheerful. It's cheerful endurance. Can we have cheerful endurance to show our patience, to work our patience? Can we do that, have cheerful endurance through things that we go through? The last thing, an example of Jesus the biggest one was when he went through the suffering. He went through the mock trial where they stood there and they mocked him. And then he also suffered and maintained his patience through the crucifixion. He is our greatest example. So the next time, I just want to encourage everyone, the next time that you're feeling like your patience is wearing out, I'm losing my patience my patience is, is on the edge. I about lost everything. Just stop for a second and think. You know, I know the old cliche, what would Jesus do, right? But Jesus was a great example of, our, of how to be patient in tough times. And he, that's something we can draw from and go through. When we're going through those tough times where you do feel yourself about to snap, to take that step back and say, wait a minute, this is nothing what my Jesus went through. This is nothing. So I just want to encourage everybody about that and myself. I'm preaching to myself because I, it is a, it, I'm a work in progress, right? That's it. Thank you. Amen. It's one thing to have endurance, but cheerful endurance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the difference right there. Who's next? Okay, come on down. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to go with Jesus. That we went to visit a woman, Mary, and <clears throat> I heard a lot of really good things about her. And uh, I'm getting ready for a trip, so I'm trying to get this ready, get this tank full, so that I can be effective where I'm going. And. Um, Holy Spirit, I just ask help right now. Just help me right now to say what I need to say. Okay, here's the scripture. I want to give you a scripture. Sorry. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering flask he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory and to his name 
uh, Gentiles will trust. That's not the part I want. I want a bruised reed he will not break in a lightly dim flask. Yes, this is in Matthew 12, 20. Okay, a lot of you know I went through cancer, and it was very serious. And my daughter, I was talking to her today, and she goes, Mom, you're a miracle. Everything about you is a miracle. You're a miracle, Mom, Mom, Mom. And, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, because I'm trying to get from there to here. So um, the Lord showed me something. You know how you get those things to put your spice in and grind it down? They do it in Hawaii, too, for make poi and stuff like that. Well, basically, that's what happened. He just went like this till I was dust. There was nothing left. And he, I was a bruised reed. And he breathed life into me. I was dead, 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 many, many, many times. And he breathed on me. And these people here have breathed on me. Mary breathed on me yesterday. She breathed on me. She breathes on me. She breathes on me. Your music breathes on me. So I was dead, and I'm coming alive here here in this place and online just because you're there doesn't mean God isn't there when I was in that hospital you know people were praying everywhere people came in and played music and sang to me and believe me you think you're you know you're not there here but your soul your soul responds to that it was breath the breath of God and so, Lord, you know, I just want to pray for all of you. I just want to thank you, God, for this church, for this body, for the body that's online in, um, where is it? Where is that online over that you ministered to? Um, India. Yes, Lord, for the people in India, Lord, I pray the breath of God right now would breathe on them. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you touch every single one of them that's listening tonight. And if they have a need, God, you are the God of miracles. Here is a miracle right here, right here. You are miracle Jesus. And I just pray, God, for them and anyone in here that needs a miracle, God, that you can. You're a God that can. Breathe, Holy Spirit, on this place, on this place, and it never be the same. Fill this place up with people that need the healing power of Jesus. And Lord, they'll be falling out of their cars out there because the Holy Ghost is going to go beyond these walls, beyond these walls, the perimeter, Lord. It's going to happen because you are are going to do it. And I thank you, God. Bless Jackie and Barbara for their labor. I don't know how they do it. Labor of love, Lord, just constantly going, going, going. I don't know. I don't know. So thank you, Father. And I just bow my knee to you, Father in heaven, because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I give you all, just like that song, I surrender it all, Lord so that you can use me, so that you can use me, Lord. Humble before you, God. <sighs> Jesus, bruised reed, he will not break in a lightly dim flask. He will not put out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that word. It's wonderful how the Lord works on variety night. How he puts it all together. <laughs> so on Monday night, I had a really unsafe feeling. Just one of those feelings where you're just like, you're tired, you can't fall asleep, you just feel unsafe. 
Well, I was like, God, I know I'm safe. And so I got up. I made sure nothing was in the house. I checked all the doors, made sure they were locked, which I guess that just helped my mind. But I said, God, just take this feeling away from me because I know I'm safe. I know it in my head, but I just have this feeling that I just don't need this feeling anymore. And so then he said to me, You're, you've always been safe. You're safe right now. You've always been safe, and you'll forever be safe. So Isaiah 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. So our refuge is a place where we can go to, where we can feel safe. And um, Psalms 91, 11 said, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So no matter where you go, I just want you to remember that you've been safe, you are safe, and you'll always be safe. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to give God the glory because tonight we were at the football field all across the Sling County tonight. All the high schools were having a field of faith. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but every year we try to go. I pick a school and try to support it. And uh, just um, we, last couple of years we've been at Bryant, and uh, it's just amazing. The students come. It's student-led. They bring a worship team out there, and they have, like, preaching, and all the students are out there. They feed everybody, and they just do all this time. Well, um, I didn't know Boxite did it. It and my grandbaby goes to Boxside, and so um, I called her, and I said, are they doing it? Because I was really shocked, but this year, the schools have upped their ante, so I was excited about this, but like, it was going on tonight at Benton, at Bryant, at Harmony Grove, at Boxside, uh, at Sheridan, there was all, you know, just coming together on the field and worshiping, and so we had opportunity to go there and to see that, and so that's why I have the sandals on, because we was outside on the football field, but it was just awesome, but in the middle of that we, um, the storms were coming, so they had to, we did the worship part, and we got to hear students stand up and give their testimony, and, and talk about the Holy Ghost, and how the Holy Ghost needs to lead you, and guide you, and I'm back there, yes, yes, you know, all excited, because it's, it's exciting to me when I see a young person want to love Jesus, and I'm so proud of my niece, that's Isabella Grace right there, she's been, she been full of the Word since she's been a baby, and uh, this year in her school, she's homeschooled. And this is exciting because this year her mother has given me opportunity to be her teacher. And so one day a week, she comes to my house for sermon class. And so she, uh, so her and I get to spend Thursdays together. So it works out. So every Wednesday she can travel with me to churches and get to minister. And she gets to see her aunt firsthand doing it. And then on Thursdays, we come together at the table and we just love Jesus and love the word. And so I'm super excited about that. So y'all just be praying because I told her, I said, if I don't teach you how to preach the word I want you to love this thing like I do eat sleep and breathe it and if I can just get her at the age of 16 to love this word and begin to just saturate in it then I've done something for the kingdom of God but I want to share with y'all this this evening a little bit of something about uh to go to Mark 5 and like I said I got an NIV Bible because y'all are gonna laugh but every time um I have a Bible for every place. I know people say, uh, you know, you might have too many Bibles, Jen. But in my house, that's why my husband, when I lost my Bible that time, you know, he said to me, Honey, bunny, you got so many Bibles. You're really going to cry over that one? I, I mean, you can, we can get another one. I could buy the same one. And it, it's not the same. I'm just going to tell you. It's not the same. And when I take my Bible, the Lord sometimes will tell me which one to take, to be real honest. One day I went to Rib Crib and I took my nighttime Bible. I said, Lord, why you want my nighttime Bible to go to Rib Crib? This is something just dropped in my spirit. I took it to Rib Crib to meet with a friend. And we're sitting there and the waitress comes over there and she said, oh my goodness. She said, can I sit and listen to whatever you got to say? Because that Bible looks like it's been used. 
Christ. And I said, well, Lord, maybe that's why you wanted my nighttime Bible. It's held together with a rubber band. And sometimes when Willie wakes up in the morning, he might have axe wrapped around his neck because it's in, it's my bed Bible. And I'm not, I'm serious. I sleep with that Bible in my bed. And so that's just my nighttime Bible. But God will use anything. And this is my car Bible. So uh, this is an NIV version, Grace. My sweet little niece, she leaned over and she said, Jen, I can't preach out of that Bible. That's not King James. So what she did, so you know what she did? She, she did it by memory, praise God. That's how you hide the word in your heart. It's just like this. But I want to show y'all something that I saw this week that has really encouraged me. Um, it's over in Mark chapter 5. And I know you've heard the story. I'm going to start in verse... Um, I'm going to start in verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by the... Mm, no, let's skip down. We got the I said. Over the side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was on the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there seeing Jesus. He fell down his feet, pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and lived. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had subject to bleeding for 12 years. And the King James said she had an issue. You ever had an issue in your life that people want to act that, make that your name? It's no longer that you get to be, hey, there's Jenny. No, it's, hey, that's the woman with cancer. No, hey, that's the woman with sugar diabetes. No, hey, that's the woman that walks in poverty. No, that's the woman that, that's the issues that they have. So this woman, she had an issue. She didn't even have a name. That's the way the world had said it. So she had an issue for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all she had, and she got no better but grew worse. The thing about it is you can spend every dime that you can do and exhaust every avenue, but Jesus Christ paid for everything that you can have for free. And he don't have to, you don't have to do the suffering. Sometimes we think we have to do the suffering, but we don't. She suffered. You know what the Jewish people made her do? They had to drink herb stuff. I did some research. They drank herbs. She had to drink that and it burnt all the way down. They wanted her to go outside and stand on a certain ditch and stand a certain way so that till for so long. They put her through some suffering. And besides that, she had to be called unclean the whole time. She couldn't be a mom. She couldn't be a wife. She couldn't be nothing because of her issue. Because see, the world wants to make you believe if you have an issue, you can't be a mom. You can't be a daughter. You can't be a wife. You can't be a Christian. But but it's an absolute lie because you don't have an issue. You're a child of the Most High God. And so here she was. She was in this crowd and she grew worse. Look, it said, when she heard about Jesus. Let me tell you something. When Jesus does something for you, I appreciate your, your testimony about cancer and your testimony about COVID. When Jesus does something for you, tell it. Tell it again. Tell it. Tell it again. You know why? Because people need to hear about Jesus. When she said in this word, she heard about Jesus. Well, if she heard the law and she heard the religion, she wouldn't be wanting to run to Jesus, would you? No, because you got to know this. Jesus wasn't talking law. See, so many people come up and say, oh, Jesus is all about religion and all the law. And I'm not saying he did away with the law. He fulfilled the law. But the thing about it is he brought grace. And so here's the thing. If he was out there saying, well, you're not going to get any better because you're just so awful and you don't deserve to be healed. And he was hitting her over the head. Well, then she wouldn't have run to him. But she said she heard about Jesus. So you know what she heard? She heard the demonic man that was on the other side of the sea that got set free, got healed and he said to Jesus, Jesus can I go with you? He was set free he was naked and in a tomb he was cutting himself he was doing all kind of craziness and now he's dressed in his right mind standing by Jesus and you know what he said, can I go with you? I'm telling you right now if I was naked and in the tombs, somebody set me free, I'd want to go with him sleep with him, eat with him, wherever he went. And so he said, can I go with you? You know what Jesus said? No, you can't. Oh, why can't I go? Oh my. I would have been like, I want to go. I'm going to get in your suitcase. I'm going to get on your boat. I'm going to get on your back. I'll be your backpack when you run. I don't care. I just want to go with you. But the thing about it is, Jesus said this, stay and do what? Tell your friends. Tell your family. How did that woman hear? She said, I heard Jesus. 
She wouldn't even have heard that he could do it if he didn't stay and tell it. But he stayed and tell it, so she got to hear it. So look what it says. It says she heard about Jesus. She came up from behind the crowd. Let me tell you something. When you got an issue, people want you in the back. Stop being in the back. We're not bad Christians. Uh, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the first and not the last. I am not going to let the devil and his issues dictate me. I don't have an issue. I am Jennifer Baker, the child of the Most High God, and I am going to be in the front. And so what she did was she said this, the, the crowd come and touched his clothes because she thought if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She already thought it before she got there. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from suffering. And at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from her. He turned to the round to the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? Jesus was, now remember the sea's right here. The people are pushing him. He's backed up against the sea. And all of a sudden somebody's touching him. But there's a lot of people touching him. Do you know there's a lot of people walking around serving Jesus, standing right by him, but don't really know him and ain't getting nothing out of him. I'm going to be real honest with you. There's a lot of Christians out there saying they're Christians and they know Jesus, but they don't have no relationship with him. They're sick and hurting and dying in this world because they ain't touching him. But this woman touched him, and so he said, who touched me? And this is what Peter said. And they realized... Um, Go back up here. You will see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered and said, Who touched me? How do you think we could know that, Jesus? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, he came and fell at her seat, trembling, and told him. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. When Jesus was walking, she touched him from behind. When God, all through the Old Testament, his back was to all the men in the the Old Testament. Why? Because the men kept sinning. They kept sinning. So Jesus said, God said in the Old Testament, my back is to you. Well, when this woman reached out to touch Jesus, grace turned around and looked her straight in the face. Jesus looked her straight in the face. Jesus said this, I love you, daughter. I love you. Your faith has turned me around. Your faith has turned me around. Tonight we can have our faith turn him around because he doesn't keep his back to us. Grace looks right towards us. Let me just tell you something. If you really believe God saved you, then when you have a problem and you call on his name, God's grace is looking at your faith. And your faith is looking at his. You need to see this tonight too. There's one more thing I wanted to point out. After he said that, he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Look, when she first started, she was what? She was a certain person. In this room, we have certain people. It could be anybody. It could be anybody. She was a certain person. When Jesus turned around and he said, who touched me? She became a somebody. She became a somebody. At first she was a nobody. She was a certain person. Then Jesus turned around and he said, who touched me? I'm going to make her a somebody. And then you know what he said? You're not even a somebody anymore. You're a daughter. You're a daughter. I call you my own. That's what Jesus Christ does when he comes on the scene. So when we have issues in our life, we need to realize that he took a certain person. He took Jenny right here, and he made me a somebody, and then he called me his own. Absolutely called me his own. And so this, morning, this evening, I am just thankful that issues don't determine what we have. And I, I said this to be the truth. I told this to my church body. I said, issues come and issues go. And issues can be health. Issues can be money, marriage. There's a lot of things that issues are out there. But no matter what the issue is, Jesus Christ is the grace. And he is enough for your issue tonight. And he is willing and well able to heal you. And then I want to share one more thing. And this goes along with Jesslyn's. Because this is something the Lord reminded me this week. And I said, Lord, you're so good to us when she was talking about patience and the cross and him enduring it. When I was a little girl, I, um, everybody knows I'm a daddy's baby. And when I was a little girl, I guess I was about eight years old. I went and stayed the night at my aunt's house. She lived about five miles from our home. There was snow on the ground, and there was, uh, there was no way to drive. Because in Arkansas, when there's snow, you ain't driving. That's just the way it is. It ain't like that in the north. 
But uh, so there was snow on the ground and I was over there. And now since I'm a grown adult, I see it a little different because God's good. But I wanted some eggs. How many of you know sometimes we want more than we, what we even need? And so I was sitting there saying, I want more. I want three or four. I want this and I want that. And I don't think my aunt had a whole lot of money at that time. And so she was like, you don't need that. You don't need that. How many times do we say to God, I want, 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 want. And think about it is God gives it to you. Ain't he good? He's so good. Even though he knows that's probably not the best thing for us. And uh, so I, I just want, 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 right? So she cooked me these eggs and she made the white slimy. I don't know if you've ever seen a whew, sunny side egg up and it was slimy. And she cooked it and she, I, I looked at her and said, I am not eating that. I am not eating that. She said, oh, you are eating it. And I said, no, I'm not either. I'm not eating that. And I said, I can't, I can't eat it. I, I'm going to throw up in my mouth if I have to eat that. She said, no, you will eat it. You ask for it, you are going to eat it. So she said, you sit right down there at that table, and you do not get up till it's eight. So I sat there and looked at them eggs, and I thought to myself, I'm not eating these eggs. I need some help or something. I said, I want to go home. She said, you're not going home, young lady. You're going to eat the eggs. And so she was sitting there. I said, it felt like I sat there for days and hours and weeks. I know it wasn't that long. But it felt like I sat there for a long time. You ever felt like you're sitting waiting on God for a long time? And the devil's got you bound to a chair. Think you're looking at that kind of mess like, I ain't fixing to eat this devil. <laughs> Literally, he does that to us. He, gives, he prepares something for us and we're looking at it like, I ain't fixing to eat that mess. But we're still sitting in a chair. Come on now, somebody get up out of the chair. Why are we sitting there looking at it if we ain't going to eat it? But he's got us frozen in the chair. So I'm thinking to myself, can she have to go to the bathroom or something, Lord? Because if she goes to the bathroom, I'm going to go to the phone and call Daddy and tell him to come get me real quick. And so what, about five minutes went by, she went out of the room. I ran over to the phone. I dialed the phone real quick. Daddy, he answered the phone. And my dad, dad said, Daddy, come get me. I want to go home. Click. Ran back to the chair. When I got back to the chair after that, I'm like, oh, that was so good. Because, you know, here's the thing. All it takes, y'all, is enough courage to get up out of the chair to make a phone call to your God, and he comes. Because although I lived five miles from that, my aunt, my dad got up after that, and he looked at my mom, and he said, Jenny wants to come home. She said, what are you doing? He said, I'm putting on my boots. Why are you putting on your boots? I'm going to get her. Mom said, you can't drive. He said, I'll walk. I will go get her. He puts on his boots. Mom said, call over there. Say, what's going on? Why are you acting like that? Daddy said, I heard it in her voice. I'm not calling back over there. I got my boots on and I'm walking five miles one way in the snow to get my daughter. He walked five miles. I know I sat at that table. I sat there knowing God was coming. I sat there knowing my dad was coming. After time went by, she said, you're going to eat those eggs. Nobody's going to know. You're going to sit there. You're going to sit there all day, young lady? I said, yeah, I'm going to sit here. Say, I'm going to sit here. Why don't y'all call the devil's bluff? Sometimes we have to sit someplace, but you don't have to deal with him. You can call on God and sit there quietly with a smile on your face, knowing your rescuer's coming. You don't have to answer back. You don't have to do nothing. You just sit there and smile exactly what I did. And all of a sudden, it was about, I guess it took my dad about an hour to get there. Or 45 minutes, seemed like it was. He bust through that door. My aunt's face dropped down. He looked at my aunt and he said, Jenny, baby, get your shoes on. We're going home. And he looked at her and he said, don't you ever make my daughter eat anything she don't want to eat. And so my aunt, she just said, well, she wanted it. But ain't that how God is? No matter if we wanted it, no matter if we asked for it, no matter if God gives it to us and we're sitting there glued by the enemy's tactics, if we call on God, you know what he does? He shows up. He shows up every single time. And that day, I want you to tell you at 10 years old, that was the best. I can't even, I can't wait till I get to heaven and walk with my heavenly father like I walked with my earthly father on the snow because the God of the snow, that day we walked home and we walked a little while and he said, baby, won't you make a snow angel for daddy right there? And he'd stop and let me make a snow angel. And oh, that I went. Making a snow angel is the best thing. I got right back up and then we walked a little further. It was one of the best days of my life because all I had to do was call on daddy. 
All you got to do is call your Abba Father because when Jesus, Jesslyn, did what he did for us, he didn't have the opportunity to put boots on. He didn't have the opportunity, y'all, to get dressed. He was naked, bare, and cut, and yet he walked. And he said this, you know, I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep walking with the patience, and I'm not going to quit because I know I'm going to die for my children and for what they did. And he did that open and, and honest and all that stuff. And today, that's why he rescues us. Today, he did it. So don't let anybody in your life ever convince you that you weren't worth it. He already did it for you. He already did it for you. He already bust through the door and said, oh, I'm here. Rich and good. Rich and good. Savor the flavor. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Our God is a good God. He is so good. Amen. Isn't God good? And all the time. Yes, He is. I tell you, you know, there's a, there's a lot of miracles in this house. There's a lot of miracles that come out of this house. I just praise Him for it. Still and know you're in this place. 
in myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay come on down Phil <laughs> Preach, brother. You know, it's funny. <laughs> me and Shelly, she asked me, she goes, you going to say something tonight? I said, no, I'm going to be sit up here. And she throws that song down, and she goes, well, if I have to sing, I guess I'll sing this song. So after Jenny stopped, after Jenny stopped speaking, I said, you got to sing, because nobody could come behind that. Go, go ahead, go, go down there. <laughs> so she goes, okay. So she goes... So I just want to say, you know, I thank God for my life. I thank God for everything that he has blessed me with, for running water, indoor plumbing. And, you know, I really, I mean, people joke, but I tell them I, I can't do missionary outside this country because they don't have indoor plumbing. You know, I got to do missionary here, if anywhere. But, you know, he goes beyond and just gives us. And, you know, we went and saw Todd White this weekend with Barb and Jackie. And, you know, he talks about it's one thing to go around and just say, you know, there's a Jesus and there's that. But it's another thing to have a relationship and wanting to serve a father and a God and just get a relationship and just be thankful that, hey, he's changing you. You know, we, we all come different backgrounds, different places, you know, and we're, of course, different colors, you know, but God's love is there no matter what, you know? And I'm just thankful for that. <laughs> Amen. Hold that mic close. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I love him. I love, I love Grayson, but I love Jesus. Amen. 
He's, you know what, he did, and, you know, and I did. I've, I've in, I enjoy variety night because there's so much that we get from everybody. You know, I even, you know, and then I was talking about what Philip was saying about Jenny. You know, I was teasing her when she came in. I said, you know what, I think you got a sixth sense when we have variety night because because it doesn't matter which night of the month we have it, she comes in, and we're so excited to have her here too. You know, she taught, she was teaching on grace, and what what uh and I'm just gonna be honest with you, I don't I didn't have anything when I walked in. I know that surprises everybody. But um what what I wanted I have us to do is if everybody will open your Bible to Psalms one thirty six, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna read that whole chapter together. And it's not one nineteen, so y'all should be glad about that, all right? So before we read that, I wanna tell you the definition of mercy. In the word is forgiveness and withholding punishment. The definition in Webster for mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to harm or punish. So, you know, when we think about God's grace and his mercy for us, that that what... He gave, he went to the cross and he died for our sins, but you know... We, we have mercy because there's a lot of things that he, that he could punish us for that, that he doesn't. Amen? That his mercy goes above, above anything that we can even comprehend because of his mercy endureth forever. Amen? I just love him now. So now, all together, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To who, him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which lead his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon king of the Emirates. For his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of the Bashans, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate. For his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endureth forever, who giveth food to all flesh. For his mercy endureth forever. 
Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. He parted the Red Sea. He gave an escape where there was no escape. He gave the, he was a, the, he was already in the fire before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got there that he gave them covering. Amen. And I just praise him tonight that, that he goes before us and that, that he redeemed us, that, that we can sing a song that the angels cannot even sing. That we have been redeemed. That we are not his servants. That we are not, but we are the blood of the, of the firstborn. That we are, we have a heritage because of our bloodline. Amen. I just love him tonight that, that all through it that we do, that we forget that he is such a great God that he, that he makes, you know, and, I, and I've used that before that he makes the, the horses fuzzy in the winter. To keep them warm. That he, that he makes things that, 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 you know, that they can take care of themselves. That, that he didn't leave anything out. That he made polar bears white. But if you shaved one of them, they're black. So that, so that they, they stay warm on the inside. He gave mothers a way to nurse their babies. That even if their food is low, they can still provide for their child. I'm telling you, he thought of everything. Even to the point where that if you read up on it, that even when the in the season when the flies are the worst in Africa, that there is certain types of lizards that come and that's what they eat for that season. That there's more of them during the time of the flies. That he didn't leave nothing out. Nothing out. That the word says that he is the God of the night season. That even when we are at our low and we're seated in that chair that we cannot move, that that's the reason we can still smile because he's coming. That he's, that he is our rescuer. That he, when our, when we bow our knees, our deeds are bowed. Amen. I love him tonight because he's the, he has already pre-thought of everything. He had the ram in the bush on the mountain waiting for them to get there. They didn't have to carry the sacrifice up. It was an easier walk. Amen. Maybe not, not, you know, and where they were headed, but there wasn't the heaviness of, the, of having to take the sacrifice with them. He always provides. There is nothing that he ever leaves out. He is an on time God, and he will always stay on time. That he is a faithful, faithful God. No matter when we come, fall short and we may look the other direction or we don't stay focused, he still stays faithful and true. That where the word says that he is the begin that he is that he is the finisher of our faith that he he takes us from the beginning to the end when it says that he is the alpha and the omega then he is the beginning and he was in the end that whenever it says that it was the the power the god the son the holy ghost it was also god the blood and the the i'm sorry the word and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That he's, he's thought of everything. And I just love him tonight and I praise him and I thank him because I know in my life that he has showed me way more grace than I deserved and far way, way more mercy than I deserved. And I am so appreciative of him for who he is and who I am in him. Amen. Good word. Amen. I'm enjoying all these good, this good word. Who's next? You know, when we gather together like this and we have this washing of the water of the word, I mean, it, it hits us from all directions. Well, whoever needs whatever, the Lord brings about somebody to bring a word or a song or something that's washes us and encourages us and strengthens us. That's good. That's the operation of God. Amen. That's precious. Anybody? Why don't you run down here and give us a testimony? That's right. I, 
and uh, and look here, we've got, and I know, I know uh, Melissa Duval's got testimony. And uh, let me see, let me point somebody else out. And I and I, I'm absolutely sure that Bob's got testimony, or a song. Yeah. song. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Who's coming? Don't y'all don't y'all run over each other getting down here. <laughs> I'm just glad you can walk, sister. Yes. Breath, I'm here. He's good to me, always has been. I was like 12 years old when he first saved my soul. And I, I've left him, but he never left me. And I thank God for that. He's always there. I can call on him day and night. You know, there's no, he doesn't put me on hold or anything. You know, he's, he's always right there. And there's a song we sing. He's right on time. You know, and, and I thank him. I was having a problem. I lost my apartment that I had. I had to go live with my nephew. And they're good people. But, and I love them very much. But they have their way, and I have my way. You know, and that's their house, and I wanted mine. And, but I hung in there for seven months. I hung in there, and I kept praying every night. Every night I'd pray. Finally, I got it. I got a telephone call. Come and sign the papers. I went and signed the papers. And I've been in there almost three weeks now. And I'm still not situated. I've still got boxes that are full. But, you know, it, it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm in no hurry, you know. So I'm, I'm like, God, you know, it'll take care. I'll take care of it, you know, slowly but sure. But where I, when I get it, it's going to be done the way I want it. But I thank him. He's healed my body many times. I had a bad aneurysm one time. I was dead. A couple of times they had to bring me back. But, you know, he was right there. It was not time. You know, the devil thought he'd get me. But the devil said no. I mean, God said no, not now. You know, I've got still work for her to do. And I thank him for that. I had a heart attack. I've had two. He's brought me through both of them. You know, and I'm still having problems. But I know he's going to bring me through. You know, I mean, that's, that's why I love him. Because I know that he's there. And when it is my time to go, I'm like Sister Marie when she said, do you know that she didn't, when she thought she was going to die, she didn't fear it. I'm the same way. You know, when it comes, I'm ready. I want to go home. I want to see my mama and my daddy. I want to see my grandmother and grandfather. I've got Norman, my cousin, who's married to Marie. He's up there. And so many others of my family. And I'm kind of homesick. You know, there are times when I really get homesick. I want to go home. But then I look around and said, there's so much more here that needs to be done. So much more. But I thank him because he's always with me and he always will be. I want to praise God because the past two days I hadn't felt good. I was, well, today may the third day actually. I hadn't felt good, and I'd just been laying in the bed. And so this afternoon, about 2 or 3, I guess, I thought, why am I laying here dealing with this? And so I just began to pray, and then I thought, oh, let me send Sister Barbara a message. So I messaged her and told her how I was feeling and stuff. And then uh, anyway, a little bit after I got up and I felt better all at once, started feeling better, I got up and took a shower, and I'm here tonight, and I praise God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
Well, while Bob is uh, getting set up, Bob blesses us with his guitar singing and playing and singing, and uh, that's great. Another, I tried to write another song over the song that I heard because I just didn't, I couldn't, I didn't know where it was at. And I go, well, I heard it on the radio or something. So I just kind of make up my songs. You'd be surprised how many songs I've made up that are similar to the songs that you guys are singing. So and, and, and it's okay because it's between, I just love worshiping God and that's the way it is. <laughs> and that's what this song's about. I heard it. I didn't know what it was like, but I made up my own about it. And here we go. trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up from the ground there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down well now st. Peter don't lock those pearly gates just yet cuz I ain't got long to stay cuz when I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up from the ground there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down yeah there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. But when I hear that trumpet sound, I'm gonna rise up from the ground. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Well, I looked over Jordan, what did I see? They're coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Oh, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Cause when I hear the trumpet sound, just checking. <laughs> ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Well, I'm still listening. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, well, I've just got a couple of scriptures, and then um, uh, we, I, I, believe, I believe everybody's heart's clear. Are they clear that we've shared tonight? Amen. Uh, the first one is going to be Genesis 126, and, uh, and then we'll move quickly to our next one. 126, I just want to establish that um, when God created, uh, first of all, I want to say it like this. He created this whole world before he created us. And when he got ready to create us, and, and something that I noticed last week when I was studying, that so many times that the Lord used something here in this earthen realm to perform his miracles. Remember the prophet that uh, in, in Kings that they said, the water's bad, it's bitter. And he said, well, bring me, a, bring me a vial of salt. And he put salt in the water. Well, we know that salt can't cure bad water lest it be by the Spirit. And, and so he took something in the natural and, and operated by the Spirit. And so, so many times through the Word, this happens. And uh, so what I want, want you to look at is uh, Genesis 1, verse 26 said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so when God created man, he said, let us, 
he and Jesus make man in our image and in our likeness. And so he created mankind. But, but what I want you to see, now we're going to turn something that the Lord opened, revealed, uh, gave me revelation of today. Uh, I want you to turn to St. John, St. John, chapter 9. Verse 6. Now remember, thinking that things in this earthen realm many times are used for miracles. They're used for miracles. Okay, St. John chapter 9, verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So he took a blind man, he spit on the dirt, made mud, put it on his eyes, and, the, and told the man, Now go wash that off. Now, we're going to go all the way back to Genesis 1, and God said, let us make man in our image. The DNA of Jesus Christ, when he spit in that dirt and made spittle to put on that blind man's eyes, his DNA was already placed in man all the way back in the beginning when he, God said, let us make man in our image. So the DNA of Jesus Christ rules and reigns over anything and everything else. And that DNA is in you and I. And that's all I got for tonight. Food for thought. All right. Everybody stand. Did you receive tonight? Amen. Be back on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, ready to worship and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Are there any needs in the house? Don't ever come to the house of God with a need and then leave with the need. All right. All right. Everybody good. You ready for your blessing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, hands to. God, causes it to God causes it to prosper. Our children, Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth. That causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full. Filled up and running over with health, wholeness, completeness. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen.